So I literally just flew out Superman style, like put my arms out to try to brace my fall. The worst is when you wipe out and people come running and like all you want them to do is go away. You're like, nothing happened, nothing happened. I want something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I'm your host, Kat Wonders, and this is episode 144. Okay, a couple things. I'll get into the reason why my shoulder is torn up in a bit. I'm totally fine, I think. <laughs> also, this dress that I'm wearing right now, it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, but it is not fitting me right. Let me show you. I'll turn this this way a little bit to be. So the back, this just needs to tighten up or something. Anyway, I just should have bought a smaller size. I, I love the length because I got a bigger size. Because it is a bigger size, but. It's just really not fitting me right. And I'm still debating whether it's worth taking on my trip because I bought it for that. And I wonder if I put it in the dryer, if it'll help, probably not. I just need an extra string. So this one here is good. I just need one down here. Maybe it's just my head. I know you can't see a full length version of this dress, but um, sorry, I'm just going to quickly check. All right, so. I can only raise one arm. I can actually raise my right arm too, very, very slowly and carefully. But first let's talk about the cocktail that we're gonna make because this is gonna be exciting. You know why? I've never made it before and I think it could either work really well or it might be a freaking disaster. We're just gonna find out together. Okay, so the other day I bought a bottle of Hennessy and I've had Hennessy like maybe once or twice in the past, but I've never actually purchased a bottle because it's so damn expensive. And like, for what? I don't, I'm not like a cognac lover. I don't appreciate really good, is that whiskey? I don't even know. <laughs> but I um, was like, well, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> no pun intended. So I bought a bottle and it's damn good. Look how much is gone. It's, it's not just me drinking that by the way. There are multiple people have had sips on this. And then I'm gonna mix that with some triple sec, much cheaper alcohol. And then some cranberry juice along with, I've got my clean shaker here, along with some lemon. God, these straws, glass on glass, just really, freaks me out. <laughs> okay, so these glasses I've also, I bought, I think for Halloween last year, but I keep them in my cupboard because I love them. And some ice and I've got my little juicer here. Oh shit, I don't have a knife. Oh frick. Maybe I won't be putting lemon in it. I do have half of a lime, but the lime is kind of dried out and also it's it'll still work. I just was thinking lemon might work better with this than lime, but because I don't have a knife in here. This is gonna be, I mean, I could peel it and then squeeze it like that, but that's gonna be messy. So let's just not do the lemon <laughs> and do the lime. Now, I'm not sure how these are gonna work together. The lime and the triple sec, I think already goes well together because this is just an orange liqueur. The Hennessy is just kind of a really smooth whiskey to me. The cranberry juice, we're just gonna shake it up. I'm gonna try to shake it. So the issue with my shoulder is like probably a dislocation and tear, but on the inside here. And I'll tell the story as I'm making this cocktail, <laughs> but I can't tell stories and make cocktails at the same time. So you're gonna have to wait. I'm gonna make the cocktails just cause I need a freaking drink right now. <laughs> I hate being in pain, you guys. Anytime I have any type of ailment, it like depresses me. <laughs> I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna weep, lick my wounds. I'm gonna save the ice for 
Mr. Skullhead. So that movement, anything like this way is okay. I can lift, can raise my arm slowly right to about there. And then this is all, but anyway, I tried to phone physio this morning and I called right at the right time, but because I live so far out of town, she's like, oh, that actually won't work. She's like, I just had a cancellation right now. And then she's like, do you live in town? I was like, no, I live out of town about 20 minutes. She's like, nope, that won't work. Call me if you have another opening. So I might have to ditch this podcast if there's another opening because I'm leaving tomorrow on a little vacation. <laughs> and I'll be in a different province. And then I can't see anybody. But luckily, my brother-in-law is a... He is a... Massage therapist going to school for osteo osteopathy to become an osteopath. So he might be able to give me some suggestions. I'm like, I just hope I don't need surgery or something weird. But I'm functioning fairly well, and I don't think I'd be able to if it was worse. Okay, I'm going to start with the lime. <laughs> just, just because it's in front of me. Let's see how much juice we can get out of this dry half. Woo! Let me see. Okay. Holy shite. Also, squeezing my hand doesn't affect anything. No pain there. All right. So, half a lime. Happy with the quantity of juice that came out of that one. I'm going to do... Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do a shot of Hennessy. Hennessy is 40%, so... I'm just going to begin. Lit. Shot of that. I love the smell of this. It almost has like a like a bubblegum undertone or something. You guys are like, what? That's just what my nose picks up, okay? Don't judge me. Gee, at geez. <laughs> Suddenly just hitting my elbow way more than usual. We're gonna add one shot of triple sec. And I know maybe Hennessy is meant for just sipping on ice on the rocks. So adding these cheap ingredients in with it might make you cringe. But if you don't try, you don't know. And I mean, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm sort of adding ketchup like on a, a filet mignon steak. <laughs> Those two things shouldn't go together, but we're gonna just do that today because I feel like it. Then we're gonna add some cranberry juice. I don't know how much that was, but let's give this a shake as best we can. I think I'll just mostly use my left arm and see how it tastes. And I basically only shake until I can't feel my fingers anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna add some ice to this glass without the glass straw in there. Oh, that would suck if you imagine. If it broke and then just sipping little shards of ice. I mean shards of glass. <laughs> Come on. Okay, we're good. It's so these uh, these Yeti tumblers or whatever whatever they're called, insulated cups, are um Wow, they're pretty impressive. Like the ice, it's so cold in there. The ice freezes to the side and it's like, if I were to leave this and forget about it, even without the little top on, it would still stay frozen for like a long time. Now I don't have a strainer either. So I'm just gonna try to pour it. Actually, I could pour it through this. That's what I'll do. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh. It's reaching and like when the weight of my arm is pressing down, it does not want to feel very nice. Oh my God. What do you know? Free pouring genius. I did free pour the cranberry juice. I did measure the other ingredients, but this is, again, how impressive. This is 
the exact amount. And it's kind of appropriate because it's red with a skull head, you know. Kind of, I'm getting excited for Halloween almost. Wow! <laughs> it's so good! What? Holy shy shnikes. <laughs> I'm trying not to swear in the first 10 minutes of my video, even though, like I said, I'm demonetized anyway, but... Oh, okay. Let me tell you what happened. I flew out of a golf cart. <laughs> I was golfing with a friend yesterday. Now, we're just basically messing around. I don't golf very often. I used to work at a golf course in the pro shop. I used to golf all the time. I was a lot better, but I've never been good. I've never dedicated enough time to actually really seriously take golf seriously. So anyway, I was letting her drive, which was not a good idea because there were some bevies had and I kind of thought, because she's a bit of like a prankster, like a funny chick, but she was like, I thought it was so funny how when you accelerate in the golf cart, it like immediately like almost spins out and then it just, the dampener slows it down. So you're just kind of like then cruising. And so when you're cruising long distances, you're sort of bored. So you're starting to go over hills and whatever. So what happened? We got to hole number five. We were only going to golf nine holes. Got to hole number five. The mosquitoes were so incredibly bad. We both had long sleeves, long pants, and bug spray coated our clothes, everything. It didn't matter. They didn't care. In fact, I bought the bug spray from the golf course, and it's an off-brand bug spray. And the guy's like, just make sure you don't spray this near the golf cart or near any of your clothing or anything. Cause it's like basically like paint remover. And I was like, oh, but you can spray it on your skin. He's like, apparently, <laughs> but typically I'll kind of like spray bug spray on my clothes, not directly on my skin. But this time we did because we realized after the first hole that we were, we could basically fly from hole to hole with the mosquitoes, just like pick us up and then just drop us off. It was so bad. And uh, we went kind of later in the evening too, which is cooler and the mosquitoes are just out. So it was just sort of bad. So we got to hole number five and then she's like, can we just leave? <laughs> and I was like, yes, thank God you said that. I'm like, it does take away a lot of the fun when you can't concentrate even enough to take a swing or like get the, the club in the right position because they're just ever in your ears, like in your hair, they're going down your shirt. They're like, it's crazy. So anyway, I'm like, yeah, let's just get out of here. But she's like, well, I've never seen this course. Like, let's go for a little drive and go like drive through all 18 holes just to see it. I was like, okay, that's not a bad idea. So we're cruising and all's good. So because we're pinned the whole time, you're going maybe, I don't know what, how many kilometers an hour, but you're going kind of slow. And so she starts kind of going off road a little bit, going over the hills, kind of taking some risks. Before you know it, we <laughs> made it, I think, to hole number 12. And she decides to go over a hill. And as we're going down the hill, take a hard right. She immediately flies out of the side. I, just because of gravity, start flying out the, the driver's side too. And I realize that if I hang on, this is all in like a split second. If I hung on to like the steering wheel or anything to stop myself from flying out, the cart was going to come over too. Cause I'm sure it was on two wheels. <laughs> so she, out of the corner of my eye, I just see her just disappear out of the side of the cart. I'm on my way and I'm thinking, okay, well I could like probably grab and, but I didn't want to tip the cart onto myself. I didn't know where the hell she was. So I literally just flew out Superman style, like put my arms out to try to brace my fall, which I did. My neck, my head, everything's fine. 
my left arm's fine. I did kind of scrape up my left shoulder. But anyway, so, and I think I just really overextended and like really just ripped it this way. Like, <sighs> so I get out there, I'm, the wind is knocked out of me and I look up and she's walking back towards me, laughing her ass off. And I'm like, initially like where I hit on the left side, it's scraped along the little like handle before you. So if you've ever been in a golf cart, there's like little tiny sides to it. And it's not like anything. It's just like a little piece of plastic. And so that got my left shoulder. So that's what I felt initially. I didn't really feel this. And then I was like, oh, but you know, when you're so like numb after you wipe out, you don't, you can't feel anything yet. You're kind of like your adrenaline's going and it's like, what happened? <laughs> so anyway, she's fine. Totally fine. For me, I'm like, I got the wind knocked out of me. I was like laying there like, oh God, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, and so... I was like, what the hell were you doing? And I was worried too, because after I flew out, the car just kept rolling. And I was like, it could have like rolled into the creek or something like the damage could have been. And I'm the one it's under my name. So I'm the one that would get in trouble. <laughs> oh my God. And nobody saw, luckily it was dead. It was almost twilight. Well, it was twilight golf, but like there was nobody there. Oh my God. I'm like, if somebody would have seen that, that would have been so embarrassing. The worst is when you wipe out and people come running and like, all you want them to do is go away. You're like, <laughs> nothing nothing happened um but the cart was fine no damage to the cart just damage to my shoulder that's the only thing that happened so I'm like we have to go back because I wasn't sure exactly how bad it was and like I said your adrenaline's going so you can't really feel if like so I don't officially know if something's torn off I highly doubt I would need surgery or anything like that I just have to be careful just take it easy. I've had shoulder injuries before where I've dislocated my shoulder and like the ligaments get kind of pulled. So it's sore for a bit, but then you just don't do it again and it heals. <laughs> so I'm hoping fingers crossed that it's going to be all okay. And that, um, I have a trip coming up where I have to carry like a suitcase around and I can't be injured. <laughs> no injury. I'm really lucky. This didn't happen right before my trip, but still I just was going golfing with my buddy. Nobody suspects this kind of injury. And I'll tell you what, it's funny because I, on TikTok or Instagram, the odd time these videos will pop up of just idiot guys playing golf and how they hit each other with the golf carts and full blown like smoke them there to where they like get hit and fly over the top and like all these, just imagine the injuries that happen on the golf course that you don't think about. And also I was playing pretty good. Like I was doing good. So I was like, is my shoulder just sore from like whacking the ball? Cause I haven't played golf forever. You know, the next day after playing golf, you're like, yeah, that might also be part of what's going on with how my it's pain. <laughs> but last night I kept rolling over and like feeling the pain. I'm like, oh no, I kept, I woke up 12 times just thinking, oh God, tomorrow I'm going to, and then early this morning I was like, oh no, it's so stiff. And like, anyway, but I'm fine. It could have been way worse. Could have been my neck, you know? But anyway, just going to live with it. <laughs> but now I'm trying to do things and I feel so sorry for myself. I'm like, like reaching to grab something and I have to like brace my arm. Like, God damn, like the smallest tasks, even like washing my hair. It's like, God. Okay, you some people live in pain chronically. You guys, this is so freaking delicious. I'm going to have to write this down. But I think probably... I mean, it's a really good cognac. So I think that this is making the drink. If it was like a cheap whiskey or something, it might not be as good. But the triple sec and the cranberry juice and the lemon, every, the lime, sorry, is working really well together. I'm proud of myself. So what are we going to name this drink? I don't know why. I just, what came into my head was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> oh, stupid. What should we name this drink, you guys? If it ain't wrong, don't fix it. Let's call it. You guys are so good at coming up with names that I just can't. I can't compete. Cranberry Triple Sec Hennessy. Let's just talk about what it tastes like. Maybe we'll come up with a name that way. Let's call this a Friday Freshie. 
how did I come up with that genius name? Just creative, I guess. <laughs> Friday Freshy. Will I include the recipe down below? No, because it's literally three ingredients or four. One ounce of Hennessy, one ounce of triple sec, two ounces or more of cranberry juice and half a lime. Perfection. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I, oh gosh, it was at the top tip of my tongue. I wrote a topic down to talk about. And do you ever get that where you, you forget something, but right before you see it is, see what's going to remind you, you remember the instant, like the millisecond before you look. That happens to me all the time. Oh my God. Okay. So I was, I don't remember what it was. It was, it was a podcast or something. It was, it was some sort of trivia that was happening and the guy, oh my God. Okay. So the question was, what happens when you mix the colors red and yellow? And the guy was standing there thinking, and he, his answer was purple. <laughs> so listen, it got me thinking. There are all types of people out there. And some people have a very visual memory, a visual brain, where they can see things clearly in their head as they're imagining them. But then there are people that don't. So I think I've talked about this before, where if you were to ask somebody, okay, imagine an apple in your mind, just to see, visualize an apple. Some people will visualize a real life, red, juicy, crisp apple, maybe hanging on a tree. Other people might visualize a black and white drawing of an apple. Um, other people will just see the word apple. So you can't expect everybody to be able to figure out if you mix certain colors together, what do you get? Because maybe they can't see it in their head. It's pretty, I mean, that is really like a, a strange example because it's, that's so crazy to me to give the answer purple when you talk about mixing red and yellow, right? So, but those of you, some of you that are listening, I'm sure are like, I wouldn't know what the heck it makes. I mean, it makes orange, but honestly, how can you judge someone when you don't know? how their mind even works. Like this person could be, could figure shit out that I would not be able to figure out. So like, I just find things that seem so obvious, you have to sort of analyze. Okay, well, maybe this is what's going on with this person. It's not that they're stupid. It's just that they don't see things the same way you do. And if you can't imagine red mixing with yellow in your head, I don't know. Maybe I'm being way too kind. Because I'm telling you, I was like, <laughs> purple. <laughs> oh, but it got me thinking about that. Like even how people form memory, people that have more analytical brains or like, that's why my sense of direction is purely based on landmarks. If you were to explain to me where to go, but I can't see it in my head, like as if I've never been there, you're giving me fresh directions. I, I mean, that would probably only be the directions you need if anyway, but I can't like, if I had to look at, look at a map, I don't know which way is North or East or West. I don't know which I'm, I'm turning that thing around. Like, so, but some people just can, can do it. And same with, you know, math equations and how they see it in their head. For me, if I'm doing like five times seven, I'm, tr I'm imagining five things and seven things and trying to put, you know, like trying to, that's how my mind works. Where as some people just go to the, like this deep part of their brain, it can answer right away. I mean, I know the answer, but I'm like, that's, it's so, everybody is so different with how their brain functions and how their memory works and how they draw information and that it's super important. And I think that's, that's, there's a lot more knowledge about that now. 
Um, I gotta plug my laptop in. See, I'm already feeling sorry for myself having to bend over and plug this in. My sh injured shoulder. But anyway, um, I know there's a lot more knowledge now about the type, the ways that like children learn and how the, not everybody can get, be part of the same learning plan and get the same education. You have to sort of categorize your students. And I mean, everybody struggles and it's not as simple as like what I'm making it out to be, but you know, it's good to know and understand that, hey, somebody like Josie doesn't process at the same speed as Jimmy. And so Josie does kind of need a, to be told two or three or five. I'm Josie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you guys sniffed it out. I would have to read a paragraph multiple times for it to stick in my head. So I was way, always way behind in my tests and things like that because I just couldn't comprehend what it was. Like, I'm so distracted by, you know, Sally and Sammy were at the grocery store and Sally had seven apples and Sammy had eight oranges. And so then the question follows that, but I'm still imagining what color his hair Sammy has and maybe he's wearing a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm creating this like image in my head and then I have to read it again because this I'm I'm still think and the problem was in school too like reading along with your teacher or when it was your turn to read aloud in class luckily I was always a speedy reader but I would not comprehend one thing if I read an entire page of the novel we were studying and we'd have to move on right away because I'd read it I'd not comprehend anything I can comprehend a little bit better if somebody else is reading it because then I'm not doing the work on top of trying to create a picture in my head. But still, like reading in class was one of the worst things you could do. It was just a way for a teacher to fucking waste time if you ask me. You know what I mean? It doesn't that make sense? But honestly, like let's spend the class reading the book. And maybe it's the only way you can get your get students to read the book is by making them do it in class. But um, everybody reads at different pace. So you can't just lump everybody into one category I mean what am I even going off about <laughs> just my own childhood anger my dumbass teachers I had some real doozies you guys and some of my teachers well okay I went to French immersion school from kindergarten to grade six French immersion is different than just having a French class taught to you it is a fully French program, math, um, language arts, social studies, all that is taught in French. And I think there is one English class and that's like English. So comprehension, reading, that kind of thing. But not even because that was also, I remember that was one of my hardest classes was the French language and il, elle, e, euh, and nous, votre, they, I don't know. I don't even remember anymore, but just all of the grammar and all of the, oh, it was a nightmare. And so, but we would, if we got caught speaking English in class, we would get, we'd all start off with like 10 little class bucks or whatever, which would look like little dollar bills. Every time you were caught speaking English, they would take one of those away. And at the very end of the week, if you, if you had lost them before the end of the week, you had some sort of extra assignment to do or not detention or anything too crazy. Um, but if you, but you could count them towards something towards the end of the week. So if you were, it was, it was Friday and you still had all 10 of your bucks, you could use those as currency to like get a bouncy ball or something. So it was, it was like done well. It wasn't like a torturous thing, but I just remember being terrified to ask my teacher questions because do you know what? It's like having a, a family member or like when you're afraid to ask a question because you know they're going to overreact or that you're going to they're going to make fun of you for being stupid or something. And that's how I felt with two of my teachers very specifically. And they were important grades or like grade five and six and um, just a really not not a good teacher where because never should your student feel like they can't ask you 
but I used to pretend like I would ask a question and then she would explain it to me in French, of course. And if I, if I said, no, I don't like, je comprends pas, I don't understand. Then she'd be frustrated that she had to explain it again and say, you should have listened the first time. And then she'll go over it again. And then I would, even if I didn't understand, then I would pretend to understand. And then I learned after that, if you have a question, you got one shot because you're not going to ask again. So every time when she would explain to me, I would pretend like I understood after she would explain it. So it was like, she'd be like, oh, cat, there we go again. Put it in French. And uh, you know what I mean? Like, just kind of like a total fucking cow, bitch. <laughs> Somebody you want to like plaster to almost like Velcro to a spinning wheel and like just throw dodgeballs at their face the whole time. <laughs> I'm being really kind. <laughs> I was going to say darts or knives, you know, but I'm not a violent person. But anyway, so yeah. And there are just some people that shouldn't be teachers just at all. Like they became a teacher because they want summers off or something. Anyway, I think teaching is a very, very stressful job and you better be the right fit for it. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah. What was I talking about? Oh, school teachers. And this is, is this becoming a bitching podcast? This is what happens when I'm injured. Bitching. I'm like, fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm generally very positive. You know this. And I'm just talking. That's all. And enjoying this a lot. For some reason, my pain is slowly going away. <laughs> Dr. Hennessy to the rescue. Um, That'd be funny as a Halloween costume. So I don't know what happened. I ordered, <clears throat> at one point, I ordered a... It was from Dolls Kill, the website, and it was brilliant. It was like a clear pink plastic country western belt, but it was all little shot glasses on the belt. So to kind of mimic like, I guess, a, a bullet belt or something. And, um, and then a place where you could put a bottle <clears throat> and you could go around and give people shots. Not really probably the best idea because you're people are sticky and then people are always after you for the wrong reasons <laughs> why are you talking to me oh yeah because i have the alcohol no um and uh and it came with like a little matching vest with like tassels and a hat and i i'm sure that i ordered it i just never received it but i'm like maybe it was sold out by the time i ordered it whatever and i still think it would be a funny idea to to have that as a costume right but also um what was my point? To be a doctor, to have a doctor costume and just like a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> like I have the problem for all of your ailments. <laughs> anyway, just popped into my head. I thought I would share with you. Look at these freaking earrings. These are little crocheted oranges, I guess. And the colors just, just worked too well with this dress. I'm still on the fence about this dress because the, the fabric and the weight of it is like lovely. I just have to adjust the straps and add one more. I should almost make this around the neck and then use the extra strap to add. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out because it's going to be hard to find this exact like white string. It'll look a bit off, but I like it enough to try. So that's, that's part of the plan. Second topic, sorry, I'm like dealing with a few different things here. <clears throat> so I am heading to a very warm destination in over a month. And I am so excited. Excuse me. The bonus about going to a hot place is that you can pack lighter than you would need to if you were going someplace where you have to wear full length clothing. <laughs> So I am only bringing my carry-on suitcase. I love traveling just with carry-ons because of the convenience. You don't have to go to baggage checkout. You basically just get off the plane and go. Also, it's a lot easier to get in and out and move places when you have just a small suitcase. Because my last trip to France and Holland was like 
not summer, real hot summer weather. And I had my big suitcase and oh my God, we moved around so much that it was such an inconvenience to have like a 95 pound suitcase. And it's my fault. Like the suitcase itself is almost like, I think it's like 17 pounds with, with nothing in it, but it's a hard shell. It's beautiful. It's very durable. Like you can really just wheel that sucker anywhere. Cobblestone don't matter. <laughs> so I love it, but it's very heavy and like super not fair to always be making the people you travel with like, can you guys lift it in there? Like it's inconvenient for them too. And I could do it myself a lot of times, but they're also accommodating. So I'm like, don't throw your back out. Sorry. They're like, what do you got in there? Like a body. <laughs> so I'm like, pretty much like it's heavy enough to be, you know, a small person. So, um, my plan for this trip and I decided I could have done checked baggage, but no, I'm forcing myself to do carry on, <clears throat> but now I'm freaking out <laughs> because this is a 15 day trip, but I've decided that I'm going to pack. They're like little tied sheets. So they're laundry detergent sheets that you can tear a strip off of. And then it's not liquid. So I don't have to add to my liquids when I'm traveling and wash my stuff. I'm not worried so much about like underwear and that kind of thing. Cause I'll bri like my underwear are like this big. So, <laughs> so that's not going to take up a lot of weight or space, but even so I'm still going to probably have to wash some undies. Um, and really plan to wash my clothes a couple times and reuse them. And cause the thing is like, I will usually wear something multiple times before it needs to be washed unless it's like a tight fitting shirt or something that I like I'll sweat in it. And that's mostly why I'm like, I, if the armpits smell at all, I won't wear it. But if it's like a loose fitting hoodie or something, then you don't need to wash it or jeans or whatever. So anyway, I'm like also really trying to imagine what I'm going to pack, what I'm going to need. Um, it might be a little chillier at night. So I'm going to have to have one sweater that I just wear as almost my jacket, um, and fit everything in my suitcase. Now also liquids. So when you have carry on, you're only allotted so many liquids or a certain amount of liquids, but I'm like, my foundation is liquid. My mascara is liquid. I'm like, I start adding it all up. I'm like, what? Because I have to have all my toiletries and my makeup liquids in one little container. So I'm like frantically searching for miniature versions of like things that I have. Because <laughs> it all has to fit in this like little, you guys know, if you've traveled, you know this. So anyway, I it's going to be a challenge. But I'm excited too because the freedom it gives you when you just have less choice. You know, when you have your suitcase full of all your favorite things. It takes me twice as long to get ready because I'm like, I could wear that or I could wear that or I could wear that or I could wear that. But if you just have one option to wear something for dinner, you're just going to wear that. And that's just the decision that you made. But I get a little bit, depending on like my cycle, if I'm ovulating, I really want to wear something a little bit more sexy. But if I'm not, and I'm kind of in a different phase, I'm like, I would have worn jeans and probably a long sleeve shirt, not this mini dress. So I'm hoping <laughs> I just need to be ovulating on my trip. And I don't track my cycle, so I don't really know exactly when that is. And my cycle is a little bit all over the place. So I can't really plan it. Could you imagine if you like plan your entire trip, like the week that you're ovulating? You're just, this is the week we have to go. <laughs> you could pack the smallest stuff, <laughs> the smallest micro bikinis. Oh, that's funny. But, um, you know, sometimes you don't feel like wearing something. You're like, oh, damn, I'm just bloated. Just three days earlier, I had something I should have, shouldn't have eaten. And then you got a little bit of a three-month belly going on. And you got your tightest little mini dress. <laughs> you just got to rock the belly. You just got to make sure, just have the confidence. If your tummy is out to here or in here, you're just going to, and nobody is looking anyway. Let's be honest. The most insecure people generally are the, sometimes the most attractive, but people aren't, if you're on the beach, walking down the beach and you've gained seven pounds and you know, you're not your fittest. Nobody on that beach is looking at you going, gee, he really would have looked better seven pounds lighter. 
everybody's focused on themselves, especially on a beach. Of course, you're going to get creepy guys or like gawking over whatever. That's normal. But like nobody is looking at you thinking the things you're thinking about yourself. You are your own worst enemy in your head. And I've learned this where I'm like, God, you know, you're just really thinking like, I'm, you're, are you sucking your stomach in enough or, you know, like you're putting yourself through pain because you've got a fart <laughs> while you're walking in front of people and you're sucking in your belly and nobody freaking cares. Nobody's looking at you. I mean, I hate to put it that way specifically, but that's how you have to think. It's like they're just doing their own thing and they're concerned about themselves and how they look. And they're thinking the worst things about them and they're wishing that they look like you. You know, it's like such a messed up thing. It's It would be such a blessing to just get to the point in your life where you don't care what people think. And the thing is, I can say that. I can say, I don't care what people think, but I still put makeup on my face before I go out. I still like want to wear something nice and have my hair done nice. Is that because I do it for myself? Of course. Yeah. I like to feel good about myself, but it's also because you're going to be in front of other people, right? So no matter what, it's, there's a positive side to having self-respect and putting effort in because it makes you feel good, but you're also showing respect to others around you by being respectful to yourself, right? So it's kind of like a, you know, you could call it vanity, but it's not necessarily that. It's not just respect for, you know, yourself. It's respect for other people. Like I care enough about you at this dinner that I put my nice earrings in and wore something really nice to put effort into my hair. You know, it's also, it's like, you know, <laughs> I have a hard time explaining myself here, but yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying. I think I actually did a decent job, but I'm telling you, there are days where you just don't feel like putting any effort in and that's okay too. You don't have to wear makeup. Like when I'm on vacation, I, to be honest, one of my biggest liquids that I'm taking is this new 40 SPF sunscreen that's got tint to it to make my face look tanned because I have a tanned body, especially right now. You guys, this is a real tan. I know I keep bringing that up, but I'm proud of it. Usually I'm laden with fake tan and I couldn't wear white straps like this because they'd be brown by the end of the day. <laughs> but, um, oh, what was my point? How did I get in talking about tan? I don't know. <laughs> Usually I can kind of find where I was and it might come back to me. But anyway, here we are. It might be the Hennessy. Hennessy. Is there a country song where they rhymed Hennessy with you're the only Tennessee? Is Hennessy from Tennessee? And what if it's not meant to be pronounced Hennessy? It's meant to be pronounced Hennessy. Hennessy, a very special cognac. Jazz Hennessy and Co. Cognac. France. It's from France. From the town of Cognac. Well, all I know is that now I think it's probably pronounced Hennessy. Hennessy. <laughs> French version. <clears throat> oh, who do I have? Nothing. Nothing at all. What else did I write down to talk about? My miniature uh, suitcase that I have to fit all of my stuff into. Oh, and also there is a bit of a hack when you have a carry-on because as a woman, you can have a purse and a carry-on, but your purse can almost be the size of your carry-on <laughs> where it's like you have your backpack and your carry-on. They kind of allow that. So as long as your carry-on, your purse, your bag can fit under the seat in front of you. So I can fit, fit quite a bit of stuff in my purse, which I keep my actual purse in that purse. But so, you know, we're going to make it work. And I can also purchase things over there if I need to. If I'm like, oh, damn, I really need a jacket. <laughs> I really need some pants. 
then at least I know I can buy things. I'm not going to be stranded. I just might have to leave some things behind. Have you ever done that? I've brought an empty bag with me to bring more stuff home. But also, am I going to bring my metal detector? I'm really tempted because I can break it down. I have a small one. I have a big one, a really good big one, which is the one I would love to bring, but I can't. But I have a smaller one that breaks down with my pin pointer and headphones are kind of important too when you're in a public place. <laughs> so this seems to, if it, okay, I don't know if you've ever metal detected before, but part of the issue with it is when you're in public, people are very curious. So they kind of follow you around, but if they can't hear what's going on, they don't, they're not as like intrusive and sort of want to follow along. This happens with kids specifically, which is, to be honest, it's lovely and it's great. But if you don't have your headset on and you have your beep, 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 beep. And so there's different tones. And so you can kind of hear if it's something a little bit more valuable. And so you ingo- you ignore a lot of tones. But if somebody's kind of following you around, they're always like, what's that? Like every time I hear, what's that? Also, it draws a bit more attention. You can turn the volume down low, but I find I just feel almost like, you know, when you're wearing headphones on the plane, people are less likely to talk to you. If you got headphones and you're metal detecting, people seem to just not bother you. But if you're just doing your thing, and then it does happen. They're, everybody wants to know, what'd you find? What'd you find today? <laughs> Nothing. Literally 12 pull tabs. Okay. That's what I found. <laughs> One bottle cap, 12 pull tabs, which is really how it goes a lot of times. But in Europe, that's where I'm going to go. Um, <clears throat> you'll, you will be able to pay for breakfast every day by metal detecting every night. <laughs> You're going to find at least 17 euros in the sand every night. And you want to go to areas where there's a lot of activity. So if there's a volleyball net, you are finding shit. You're finding jewelry in the sand area around the volleyball pit. Um, of course, where there are loungers on the beach, um, where people lay, whatever. Uh, another good one. The problem is with like playgrounds, it, which does happen. It's obviously, you know, there's lots of stuff you can find on the playground, but you usually is metal that goes like way into the ground nowadays. So you can't really detect around there and there's too much metal around. Um, but the one thing that drives me the most nuts is when you have a really, really, really high quality hit and it's hot. It's like, no, actually the gold is like a low tone. <clears throat> and when you find one of those and you keep digging and you keep digging, and you keep digging, you're already like four feet down there. It's, it's deeper and it's, it's very thrilling. The whole fun of treasure hunting is on the search for the treasure because the anticipation is like what could it be what could it be oh my gosh it could be a ring oh what if it's like a gold coin what if it's like a roman coin what if it and then you find a pull tab because they actually ring sort of similar unfortunately but that thrill of the dig it's like the thrill of gambling or something it's like the potential right it's like fishing what's ocean fishing especially like it's one thing when you're fishing for bass or whatever and yeah the size it's like it could be a big one it could be a small one but if you know what you're fishing for it's not as like not as exciting as when you're ocean fishing when it could be anything it could be a freaking octopus on the end of your line you don't know it's like christmas you know it's exciting i that's how i feel about metal detecting it is like you are looking for treasure and there is treasure everywhere There was somebody a hundred years ago that dropped their grandmother's wedding ring and never found it. It's laying out there right now. And it could be in your backyard. It could be along the side of the river. It could be in your neighbor's yard. You know, it's super, super exciting. And when you find it's all it takes is just that one thing that you found and you're hooked forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's like a big win on the lottery or a big win at the casino you're like that from there, that point forward, it doesn't even take that for people. <laughs> it doesn't even take a big win. It takes just like the potential of a big one. But <clears throat> man, there's something about metal detecting specifically because it's almost like there are treasures all around. Like there are crystals, there are like arrowheads and ancient artifacts that people are excited about. But when it's metal where there shouldn't be metal, you're like, what is it? 
even, it could even be, and this would be the ultimate find, a meteorite. They're so valuable, those things. It's insane. If you find a big enough one, oh my God, that is just, that's the cat's ass. I don't know what it would sound like. It might even be, if it was big enough, it would be, it would distort the signal. Because what happens to me with my detector is if it's something too big or you're too close to something metal, it'll go, and it'll go beep, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's like, nope, I can't read it. Like, uh, like can't compute. It's too much. Um, but if you find that like in the middle of the sand somewhere, it's like, ooh, it's probably something big. Is it a treasure chest? Am I not going to look? No. <laughs> Are we illegally on a beach somewhere? Maybe. But we have to know what's in the sand. <laughs> Let me know if you are a treasure hunter via metal detecting or any other means. And if you've ever found anything super valuable. What's funny to me is... So we, <laughs> it's happened to me twice now. You have your metal detector and you find this was Croatia. And detecting, detecting, you know, you find the odd euro pulled out, but no actual, actually, that's not true. This one trip specifically, I, there was a copper ring, but it was a pretty cheap copper ring that was, um, it had like a leaf on it. It was nice. It was like really nice to find like, oh, I found a ring, but it wasn't anything super valuable. We're walking through like these caves to get to some outcove that's beautiful on the water or whatever. Lots of people walk there. I found a gold Michael Kors bracelet on the trail. And I didn't, like, we were detecting every day, every night. That was the most valuable thing that I found. Jewelry, gold jewelry, but it was on the walking trail. It was almost like the universe understood the mission. <laughs> and it's still, I still was gifted with this beautiful bracelet. Did I say necklace? It was a bracelet. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so that was funny. Another trip. The most recent trip, we didn't have our metal detector, but we were doing lots of like research and finding like treasures on the beach. And, you know, of course, still with like the spirit to find something cool. I found a gold bracelet, I think rose gold, I should probably even show you in the airport, literally in the middle of the floor, walking by and I see something on the ground and it's kind of like I wouldn't have even really seen it probably if the reflection hadn't been right so I could see that there was something on the floor. So as we were getting closer, I saw that it was this bracelet and I was like, oh shit, it's heavy. And it was a double chain gold bracelet, like a rose gold. And uh, we were doing some research and it turned out to be like $1,600. <laughs> and I was like, when you're in, it was <clears throat> in like where the gates are. So I don't know if you would ever actually find the person that it belonged to. So we didn't even try. We're like, well, I mean, of course, you never want to give away the treasure that you found. But I thought my first thought was like, oh, God, who does this belong to? And you could turn it over to security. But very likely the person has gotten on the plane and taken off. So anyway, it was kind of an interesting thing. But the universe does gift me with little things. And I've talked about this before. But there have been times where I've forgotten something. So like we are often heading out way into the bush sometimes for days at a time, camping, hunting, fishing, jet boating, where there's no service, nothing. <clears throat> if you forget something that you need, there's no stores to buy what you need. So like you're kind of hooped. So I forgot my gloves. You're doing firewood way the hell out in the bush. And I forgot my gloves and you don't ever, ever want to do firewood when you don't have gloves, especially me, when I do have some like dainty hands and just a sliver can happen in a millisecond. <laughs> I hate touching wood. Get your mind out of the gutter uh, without gloves on. <clears throat> so we're out there, way out there in the bush. And I'm like, literally my heart just like dropped into my stomach. So I was like, I freaking forgot my gloves. Like this is gonna suck. We're driving out there, back roads, dirt roads, logging roads, whatever. And what do you know? On the side of the road was a pair of gloves sitting there in the middle of nowhere. They were way too big. 
<laughs> they weren't my exact size. So the universe was like, hey, hey. but it was like, I couldn't believe my eyes. And this has happened multiple times in many situations where I've been, I either miss something or I find something that I wind up actually really needing. It's very funny how it works. And I call it the universe, but you can call it God. You can call it whatever you like. I just feel very looked after in my life and I'm very thankful. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, how do you explain to people either like they that don't even have a clue? Do you want to know what? I was sitting, this is, remember I was telling you in the last podcast about my friend that was talking about how he bought his son. <laughs> if you want to hear more about that, make sure you watch episode 143. <clears throat> but the similar group of, uh, same group of people, same evening, um, I brought up lucid dreaming and I explained, yeah, you know, like when you realize in your dream that you're dreaming. None of them, there was four of them, full-blown adults, older adults, had never heard of it or no, have had that experience. That's crazy to me. To not, not only know what lucid dreaming is, but also to never have, and I, I, I'm not judgy, like I understand that some people this never happened to, but out of four, like not even one out of four. And I wonder what the st statistics are if you were to ask like a thousand people, how many of them have had a lucid dream where you realize in your dream that you're dreaming? And this is kind of how it happens. You're in your dream and you start to kind of look around and there's just weird things about what you're seeing. And this doesn't happen all the time, by the way. It's very, very rare for me. And you know, when you wake up from dreams and you're like, that was so weird. Like that was my dad, but it looked like my neighbor but it was, you know what I mean? It's like so crazy. So it's not even about the craziness because you'd be like, wait a minute, you're not my dad, you're my neighbor. Like, that's not how it happens. It's more like, it's almost like your consciousness and your subconsciousness start to kind of like mesh and you're, you're in your dream and you're like, wait a minute, like this isn't right. And you start to see things and you're like, you're like, this isn't real. Like, holy shit, this is a dream but you pinch yourself, you're looking around and feeling things. You're like, this is so crazy. And then I, I start telling people in my dream, this is a dream. You're not even going to remember this tomorrow. Like you're not even here <laughs> as I'm like, this is crazy. But I always have like five minutes of dream time before I wake up. And uh, so anyway, I kind of was explaining that whole thing to them. And they're like, no, I've never. I mean, a lot of them kind of smoke a lot of dope. So I'm thinking, I know that people that smoke a lot of weed apparently don't dream that much. So I'm not super shocked there. So that might be a bit of a, you know, it would be, an, it's an uncontrolled experiment. You'd have to have a thousand people that don't smoke marijuana on a regular basis to take the test. Because if you had 50-50, <laughs> your results would be all over the map, I think. But anyway, that even hurt. <laughs> I am going to end it there. Uh, if you remember what it was that I was in the middle of talking about and just lost track, then let me know. Maybe I'll continue in the next podcast. Today, I ordered all of my Halloween costumes. So what am I going to do exactly for Halloween? I'm not sure about a high tier on Patreon. I haven't done a high tier for quite some time. However, I might be bringing back something similar um because halloween is just so fun and i want you guys to have as much fun as me so why not try on really funny crazy sexy costumes and make a high tier out of it <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep you guys informed of course i've also got some fun ideas planned for my costumes that i'm going to be wearing on my podcast so if you have suggestions let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me as on one of the podcasts in October. Um, and if you like this video or if you're listening, there is an, a video version on YouTube, so make sure you check that out. You can see my really flappy, flimsy side boob dress. Don't wanna miss that. 
Um, but if you're watching, then a like would be much appreciated. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss my future podcasts. Also check out my main channel, Cat Wonders, where I do all sorts of funky try-ons and uh, have a lot of fun. Um, and I hope you loved this podcast. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, the recipe again for this delicious cocktail is one ounce of Hennessy, one ounce of triple sec, two ounces of cranberry juice, and half of a lime. You will not be disappointed. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in and I will see you all in my next podcast or video. Bye.